So, um, I sent this to you the other day. Mm -hmm. This came across my radar, no pun intended, from mm -hmm. what you used to call your monologues mm -hmm. over at uh, the Hill. Um, R. Kelly, as we all know, he's been found guilty of 14,712 charges. Mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> Relatedly. <laughs> and he, much it, overdue. Much overdue, indeed. Uh, so, he's done from everything I've read and heard and seen. This isn't like the Cosby situation where there was like a technicality and it's like, well, I was able to get out because of this or that. No, that's not happening in this case. They got him dead to rights. There's so many witnesses. There's so many specifics. There's enough evidence and all that stuff. There's multiple cases still ongoing, by the way, even though he was just found guilty. So I saw that YouTube decided we're axing both of his YouTube channels. We're just pulling down both of his YouTube channels. Now, of course, what do those YouTube channels have on it? All the songs that you know and I know and everybody knows that were played on the radio 24-7 not too long ago. Mm-hmm. And now listen, I don't know, I didn't look yet, I don't know, my guess is there's still, you know, other people with other YouTube channels who might just throw up one yeah, of the videos, whether right. I Believe I Could Fly or any of the Fiesta with him and Jay-Z, or these are all tremendous songs, but I digress. <laughs> um, but listen, this gets into a serious conversation that, and I polled my audience on this, my Twitter followers, and I yeah. said, when somebody's a proven scumbag and a criminal, and even the worst kind of criminal, you could argue, right? Do you say, listen, separate the art and the artist, and I'm still going to enjoy the music because it's good? Or do you say, I can't do it. I can't do it anymore because, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, can't, I don't even like it anymore, or, or I feel like I'm contributing mm. to something negative if I listen to it. So now I'm going to pose that question to you. What do you think? Is it more—I don't know if you want to bring morality and ethics into this or whatever. You could describe it however you want, but— do you have a line on that? Do you feel like, I shouldn't listen to this because this dude was, like, raping underage girls, you know? Yeah, I mean, the shit he did was atrocious. Like, young girls manipulating them because they wanted to be famous. Like, I mean, it's just the level of control and abuse and totally brazen over decades is absolutely disgusting. I guess my view on this is that... Um, I think it honestly is like a personal decision. So for me, with R. Kelly, I just genuinely don't enjoy the music anymore because I can't really separate. Did you enjoy it before? Somewhat. Okay. I was not a huge fan. Okay. Um, I can't really sub because his art is very sexual in nature. Like, I can't personally listen to those songs. And feel good about it. Well, some of them are not sexual in nature. True. Yeah. True. Would I, like, condemn someone else for listening to his songs? No. And the YouTube thing is kind of interesting to me as well. Because, as you said, they took down his two channels. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they aren't, like, clearing the whole platform of his content. Um, and they say that this is in accordance with their terms of service. According to YouTube's guidelines, I'm reading from the New York Times, it may shut down the channels of people accused of very serious offenses if they have been convicted of or pleaded guilty to crimes and if their content is closely related to those crimes. But they don't apply that consistently. I mean, of course not. Of course not. They're not going through with a fine tooth comb and looking at every individual person and what's your rap sheet and is it related to your content, et cetera. So that's always my issue with these. Um, major platform decisions is that they seem to be more of one-offs. They seem to be more in response to like public pressure than any actual consistent standard or um, consistent application of their terms of service. Okay. Yes. So there's a lot I want to say about this. Um, I do think maybe this is too strong, but this is how I feel about what YouTube specifically did. Yeah. It's just such a cheap virtue signal. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's just yeah. so like, pfft, who, us? Bro, I'm a good person. Our, our, who's R. Kelly? Get rid of the channels. Get rid of the channels. Aren't we so great? Pat us on the head and say we're amazing people. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, no. You're pretending like this is some slam dunk and an obvious choice and the moral and ethical thing to do. And like you said, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. So let me give the results of my poll because I thought that was very okay. interesting. It was 55% to 45%. So, so that's close. super close. Uh, and the side that edged it out, the 55% was separate the art from the artist. And so where do I stand on this? I Honestly, I don't know. I'm somewhat agnostic. Uh, depends on what day you catch me. Yeah. But I do lean more in favor of separate the art from the artist. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just as simple as um, 
I just think it would be an absurd claim to tell somebody who still enjoys Michael Jackson's music or still enjoys R. Kelly's music or still enjoys Chris Brown's music or whatever that, oh, you support Rihanna's face getting bashed in or you support, yeah. you know, Michael Jackson doing terrible things to children or R. Kelly having basically sex slaves in his house locked up. Yeah. It's like, no, no, I don't support that. Nobody who listens to the music supports that. So why are we pretending here? Now, but let me also propose something that's a little like a third way, if you will. Okay. What if they kept the channels up and just gave the monetization to the victims? Well, that's a good idea. I like, like that. leave it up. Let R. Kelly have his channels up. Just give the money to the victims. That's good. I like that. That is a good idea, right? So mm -hmm. this time everybody's listening. Because that, that is a caveat where I sort of then I start to lean in the other direction, which is if you are monetarily helping them. Right. And that then helps them continue on their crime spree. In the well, then I'm like, behavior. okay, That's now, different. yes, now I can't do it. Well, what you said, too, is interesting about um, separating the art from the artist and how you feel about that. Because art is, it means one thing to the artist who creates it. And um, the way that you personally experience it is a deeply personal experience. Like right. what you get from the art maybe something totally different than what the artist got from it or what the artist put into it. So you sort of filter it through your own lens and it means something totally different to you. So I agree with you that the idea of like condemning someone and saying, oh, you support like Rihanna being beaten or you support what Michael Jackson did to little boys or you support what R. Kelly did just because you continue to get something from that art um, I think that is ridiculous. So I guess if I had to come down in a hard place, I would say I come down on the side of still okay to listen, but that I it's like an individual thing where if your experience of that art is tainted by what that person has done, yeah, then or if it also crosses that line of you feel like it's benefiting or enabling right, them yeah. too much, then that's a different story too. So Corin, Corin and I discussed this a while ago, and he made an interesting point, and it was in regards to when Ray Rice was caught on camera, mm. domestic abuse, oh, basically beating terrible. his wife. It was horrendous. Yeah. What happened is, and Corin and I went to the same school as Ray Rice, and he was a great, oh, really? I think, in front of us. Yeah. Oh, really? So and he even, Corin says he cheated off him for the math test, which is hilarious because Corin's terrible at that. <laughs> but, <laughs> says a lot, but what happened is uh, Nourishell High School, which is where we went, uh -huh. um, they had he had won all these, you know, these trophies and accolades and titles and everything you can imagine. And when that happened, they pulled that stuff down. And Corn's point was like, he still did that shit, right? Like he still won those things. I get that you you don't want to glorify him, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't just erase the reality of it. And if you really stretch this principle to its conclusion, you could get in some really funky and silly places. Like, for example, so I think Gandhi was doing some terrible sex stuff. Like, I think it, it's been proven that he was, I don't know if it was underage people or whatever. Yeah. But a lot of issues there, pedophilia stuff, right? Does that mean that then you turn around and be like, well, the, the other thing he fought for was, you know, I can't be on the side of you with the correct stuff with freeing India yeah. because of that. It's like, well, that's if you're being consistent, you know, you'd have to be like, well, we got to take a couple steps back from associating with him or associating with that I I ideology or philosophy because of the other terrible things he does. People are almost terribly complex, you know, and I, I feel like oftentimes in today's day and age, that nuance is totally lost on people, mm -hmm. you know, where... And I, I wish that nuance was back in the conversation. Now, having said all that, even if you enjoy, still enjoy the music of these people, you should have the common sense to, when discussing them, be like, yeah, but fuck them for what they did. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like, go ahead, I'll let you enjoy the MJ and the R. Kelly and all that stuff, but you should be like, if it's brought up, don't be a stan. Don't be like, you know, overly defensive of them. You have to yeah. be like, yeah, fuck them for what they did, but thriller's the shit. I mean, it does remind me a little bit, too, of the debates we have around, like, platforming and, right, you know, yeah. there's a school of thought that says, like, well, you shouldn't even talk to or associate yeah. with this person if they have a view that we consider to be over the line. And I think that's a really, I think that's a silly perspective. I think that the fact that you engage with someone and, you know, have a debate with them or disagree with them, but have them on your platform to do so, um, 
I don't think that means you're like sanctioning all of their views. Like we both talked about Russell Brand getting totally smeared by the Daily Beast this week. And part of their argument was like, well, he played to his right wing audience by having Candace Owens on. He debated them the entire fucking time. He destroyed Candace Owens when he had her on. It was like a very vigorous and heated debate and having her on your platform doesn't mean that you agree with every stupid thing that she's said quite the contrary so i do think you get into a similar kind of mentality of like all right so now do we have to like every piece of art that we enjoy do we have to like vet the character and the rap sheet of those that person before we have our own experience of whatever that art is yeah no i think that's exactly right so i I mean I don't, to your point, and I'll wrap it up on this, but I don't besmirch people who themselves would say, This is not. This is, I can't do it anymore. I don't like it anymore. This is too serious. Or maybe you have some personal experience Mm -hmm. in that realm. And so it hits close to home in in a different kind of way. Yes. Then I totally get it. And, and, you know, credit to you. And it's totally fine. Um, I would just say that for people who still enjoy it, as long as they have the caveat of they're willing to say, Hey, fuck them for what they did. Let let people enjoy that stuff because there is I do think there is literally a separation from the art and the artist. I mean, it's not it's not the same thing. You know what I mean? Like with all the nuances uh, of and complexities of people, yeah. you are what you do, but you also do a thousand things. And right. thing number 74 on the list is not the same thing as thing, thing number 180. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm just thinking of another um, potential hypothetical example to help think this problem through like imagine that your wedding song is like you know a michael jackson song or something like that Be more of an r kelly one probably but okay. yes take point out. all right we'll go with an r yeah. kelly song is like your your wedding song and you have this like you have a personal experience with the song this song is important to you it evokes memories of that day and it's incredibly special like why should r kelly having done a bunch of fucked up shit why should that ruin your association with that song and the fact that it's special to you in that through that personal lens? Having said all that, Bill Cosby was never fucking funny. <laughs> he was never funny. <laughs> His stand up is buns. The Cosby show a, was yeah, ridiculous. Do you have a Cosby impression? Zip zop zoop with a bop the jello pudding pop. <laughs> the kids listen to the rap music. The only other thing I wanted to mention on the R. Kelly thing, because I thought this was interesting, is my daughter is 13, my oldest one, she's uh, her name's Ella, and we were talking about some of this stuff because I talked to Ella about everything, and uh, she's like, but was R. Kelly even that big? And I was like, yes! <laughs> and it made me realize, though, in her, like, you know, budding adult consciousness, she's, you know, young teenager, she, these songs aren't played anymore. So she had no idea. And she's into me like she had no idea that he was as big of a phenomenon as he was. You're pushing me further to the side of let people listen to the music. <laughs> because if she, they don't play him anymore. She never heard. She didn't hear R. Kelly songs. It's like, what? Yeah, really. I mean, I don't want to say not at all. But she was like, yeah, but he was never really a big deal, right? And I was like, he was huge. <laughs> He's gigantic. We are so old. <laughs>